Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm George and today we're looking at something that I ordered and it came from eBay. I thought I'd share with you what I was going to do with it and how it works and if it works. And let's get it open. Scissors. And see exactly what it looks like. And what sort of condition it's in. Okay, now those of you in the know will already have some inkling of what this device is. So let's get it out of the bubble wrap. And there we go. It is a Taylor electronic fault finder. Now the grill is loose, the plastic Bakelite, whichever it is, has got a crack around the edge. Anything else that's obvious? Nothing that I can see, so let's get a screwdriver onto it and take it to bits. And here we are. That's a bit of rubber. So look, yes, there was a gasket round the edge. So let's have a look what we've got here. Um, so that's the mains, which goes to the transformer, which is mounted on the inside of here. This is just a speaker board, so that just needs re-gluing in place. What else have we got now? Ah, this is interesting. Let's poke that through a little bit. This looks to be a newer type of resistor than any of the others that are in here. Uh, we've got a Hunts capacitor, our old enemy, the Hunts. We've also got this capacitor here, which has got a, a crack right the way through it. Um, we've got this electrolytic here and this one here. This is a two, one, two, th three stage. Yeah. Three stage cap. And for tubes we have 12AU7 and in here a 9D6 okay and we have a magic eye tube an EM81 okay that's all I need to know there it looks complete so I think what I'm going to do is uh, take it to pieces And actually see what I can do to repair the case and repair the other bits while also trying to find some information. Now I've looked online already for what this is and I can't find this particular model. That's interesting, a multi-voltage selector. The information I did find out though was that Taylor was an independent company until it got taken over by AVO, which we all know AVO meters, um, a very, very respected brand of meter, which then got taken over, I believe, by Thorne, Thorne Electronics. So it's uh, quite a quite a change of companies, but uh, yeah, that would at least give me an approximate date on this. I can't see one on that capacitor. 
The speaker there is a little ELAC, which is um, quite a common UK brand. Just trying to see any dates on any of the components. I can't spot anything. I'll also have to check that all the resistors are within tolerance. So before I do anything, I think, call this the initial look. We're going to strip it down. I'm going to clean the case, repair the cracks. I'm going to clean this case as much as possible without uh, damaging the front panel. This is actually an aluminium panel that's been painted or etched. I don't know if I'll be able to get a replacement for this, but um, yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure there are things we can do. Obviously, we'll stick this back in. That can go in once we've cleaned everything up. I think I uh, think I'll start to strip it down. You don't need to sit and watch that. I think you'll find it incredibly boring. Why not watch my last video of all the stuff I got at auction? Or you could watch something else. They'll all appear over... No, they won't appear that side. You could always watch the laser video. You could always watch what I bought at auction in the last video that I uploaded. That'll appear somewhere up here. The video down here will be one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Don't forget, click like, subscribe, ring bell, ding dong, hello. Yep, yeah, brilliant. Many thanks. We'll speak to you all again soon. Bye-bye for now. Right, OK, so... Where have we got to? And we've had a little bit of a gap between the last session and this session. What we've got here is the case, and I don't know how well it's showing up. Um, probably that camera's a bit too dark, but I have used epoxy resin to glue the crack together. And um, it's set, and I'm just going to uh, let that cure for a, a day or so more before I actually start smoothing it off. Uh, what I plan to do is um, actually polish all of this off and make it black again instead of the sort of grey. It's it's had a wash and that took a lot of dirt off. You can still see some of the watermarks inside. But, yeah, you know, it, it's getting there. The same with the the front panel and the the top cover for the voltage selector. I'm still trying to work out what the extra hole... Let's see if I can get it in the light there. This was been cut in at a later date. This isn't standard. And I'm trying to figure out what use that was. And looking at it, the only thing I can think of is where somebody wanted to check that the 12AU7 valve was actually glowing. And that's the only thing I can think of. So let's put those back over on there. And let's move the case. And move the epoxy stick. Let's bring this back in the way. Now, as you can see, there's a power supply connected up and the, the thing's been sitting here and, and I've had it running at about 35 volts DC just to try and reform this capacitor because I don't have a spare. And to be quite honest, it's, it's one of those things. I just thought if I can give it a helping hand, at least it'll have some sort of some sort of uh, assistance there now what I've done is obviously I've connected it into where the voltage would come in from the rectifier so all three capacitors are actually getting charged and reformed and they, they have been like that for the last 24 hours so that's been sitting there cooking I've got the soldering iron warming up and what I'm going to do is if I shut down the mains or the power on that now and take these clips off uh, I'm ready to start changing all the resistors just to uh, get them out I did measure them and I think there's two out of all of them that are intolerance now I know it's only an audio amp but you might as well have them accurate if you if you're going to this much trouble of taking it all apart you might as well fit the right bits in there. So I'm going to start taking off resistors and see if I can uh, find the exact ones I need. And let's start 
looking where the easiest place to start, I suppose, is this end here. And I'm going to need a 2.2k and a 10k for the capacitor. Right, okay, so where are we? Pretty much done, to be quite honest. I decided to just get on with it and yeah, here we go. As you see, the T-shirts change different day. What have we done? Well, apart from changing all of the resistors, and there's a pile of them here, um, and the two dodgy capacitors, which I wasn't particularly impressed with. Uh, yeah, um, it, it's together again. Now... This obviously doesn't look original, and there's a reason for that. Um, I had to make a new one. And this one isn't straight. This bit of plywood is warped. Now, it's obviously had moisture um, from the rust on the clips and from just the general sort of feel of it. If I put it on the bench here, it, you can see that it rocks. And... Um, it wouldn't fit properly so I just made a new one and um, it's instead of using ply I had MDF which fitted straight in put the glue in and did that I did change the mains cable and I did change the coax cable uh, simply because it just you know the old coax was a little bit burnt in places where it had a soldering iron against it and these things happen to test leads yeah, it, it's together. I've cleaned up the uh, the valve container or the valve holder cover and cleaned up the front, cleaned up the bits. So it's now ready to go back together. Oh, while I think about it, I don't know how well it's going to see, but in here, I'm going to try and get some light in there. That's the glue where the crack was. And on the outside, it's almost invisible i wouldn't say it was perfectly invisible but uh, yeah i've managed to get rid of it from from the outside so let's fit this back in and uh, rather than screw it up straight away oh, i say screw it up i don't want to screw it up uh, rather than put everything in with the the screws that are there i will rest it in for testing purposes and see how it works out. I've got to figure out why. All oh, right, that capacitor's too high up. Ah. See, it's these little things that you don't find out until after you've started to put it back together again. I couldn't find a date code on any of this, which. Uh, makes things a little bit difficult in, in places, but um, not to worry. The, the latest it can be is 1958, because uh, that's when Taylor as a company was actually taken over by Avo, who are a well-known manufacturer of test equipment and meters. In fact, I have an Avo meter at the back of the workshop on the windowsill over there. Right, there we go. That fits in there now. So let me just move the mains cable out of the way. Now I haven't done anything with the front panel and I don't know why this hole was put in the front panel at all. But uh, Yes, let me bring the probe onto the table as well because it's been hanging off the bottom end. So there's the there's the RF probe and the AF probe. So I suppose the test now is to plug it in and I don't know how much of the magic eye tube you're going to see. But we'll plug it in. It is already on. It should warm up. Let me just check. Now line voltage here is quite low today, it's 223 volts and the unit is warming up, let me see, yes it is warmed up, 
I, as I say, I don't know how much of the magic eye tube you're going to see because of the, uh, the daylight. Um, yep, yeah, right. What I've got going on the bench over this side is I have my audio generator and I have my RF generator. Now at the moment we're in RF mode, so the thing for me to do would be to turn it up and yes, it picks up an RF signal. Now the thing with this one is the RF trace position is also the audio position if you're using the probe. So now I've just set the audio generator to a lower tone so that you can differentiate between RF and AF. Now if I wanted to test audio direct you switch this one to audio and as you see it's lower in volume but it's a cleaner sound it's not got the harshness of the RF probe because there is a diode in here which does chop some of the sound up. So that's the AF. Now, as I say, I don't know how much of the... Oh, still got a dirty connector there. I don't know how much of the magic eye you're going to see on that camera. But it does vary with the amount of signal you put in. So if you don't have the speaker running, let me just set that to its normal level of 0 dB. If you don't have the internal speaker running, you're running on headphones or you're connected the phones to a, an oscilloscope, you can uh, see visually on the front how much uh, RF or how much audio you have. It also is meant to check AC and DC. I've yet to work that one out. Also, it can act as a low impedance speaker or a high impedance speaker. Now, we're not looking at high power here. We're looking at testing very low power audio stages. And if I just plug this one across, it will be horrendously loud. And as you see, the volume control does nothing because all that this machine is doing is acting as an impedance match and putting the noise through the speaker. If I switch it to high impedance, the output of the generator at the moment is very low and you don't hear anything. But if I turn it over to the high impedance output, let's just switch it over. You get an output, but again, it's a lot lower because it's not actually designed as high. It's not very high impedance. It's only uh, 600 ohms instead of uh, a couple of thousand. So that's the Model 22 Taylor. Um, sometime between 19... Uh, blah, 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 and 1958, uh, this was made. I couldn't find a date on it. I haven't found any other information online except a a rough circuit diagram taken from a book i haven't found any operating manual or anything like that yet either so there we go i know it's been a a while since a video has come out especially something that uh, isn't fixing um, but there we go from dirty to repaired up here will be a video on the IM13 Heathkit voltmeter that I serviced and aligned. And down here will be a video that YouTube chooses for you. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. If not, let me know. I'll have a word with YouTube. Thanks very much and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.